Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back to my channel, it's your girl Cece or Khadija and we are back at it again today with another video. Oh, if you're new, you're most certainly welcome as well. So today's video we are going to be reacting to a thousand year book found in Turkey which contains a terrifying message. Right, a thousand year old book. Is it even possible to read it at this point? Because considering the condition of the thumbnail that I've seen, I don't know. I don't know. But let's get straight into today's video and see what this terrifying message could potentially be, shall we? Police in Turkey have recovered a Bible thought to be a thousand years old. The holy book, which was found in the central Turkish city of Tokat. Now, this is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. Does Turkish authorities have confirmed that an ancient Bible thought to be 1,500 years old. The ancient scriptures and Bibles that represent the eras of the Bible are a highly essential part of history and something that millions of people base their lives on. The majority of these historical and religious works have been lost at various points in time throughout history, mainly due to war. Many of them contained crucial information that has been forgotten or left in the past and is now concealed from Christian society. This is why such objects are highly valuable, especially on the black market, where many of them can be found or stolen from sacred locations. However, none of them are quite as special as this antique Bible. Where does it originate from? What hidden truths about the beginnings of Jesus were covered up? In this video, we bring you an ancient Bible that dates back a thousand years and contains an image of Jesus that will blow your mind. In 2015, a groundbreaking discovery was made in the Turkish city of Tokat, which has a population of more than 100,000 people a little town in which people engaged in the illegal trade of historic and ancient things in order to later sell them on the black market. During an operation, law enforcement officers were able to save this Bible from the hands of smugglers, which prevented those criminals from destroying other groundbreaking discoveries for investigators all around the world. Right next to the Bible, the authorities discover a massive collection of valuable jewellery as well as over 50 old coins. More than $5 billion are thrown away each year as a direct result of the black market for ancient artefacts. This Bible is not your average edition. Rather, it is one of the very first ever produced. It dates back between 101 AD and 200 AD. It is still unclear where this Bible came from or who penned it, according to the investigators. After hundreds of years of dust building up, the cover was severely destroyed by smugglers. They never provided the ancient treasures with an appropriate setting to care for them, despite the fact that these objects are hard to come by and are fragile. Therefore, once the artefacts have been salvaged, they are in risk of being damaged if they are not properly cared for at a museum. Despite being written in a language that is over 2,000 years old, the Bible nevertheless contains a feature that is instantly recognised to every Christian a collection of illustrations created with gold leaf, a method that has survived for many years and within which researchers have discovered the remains of various historical personalities. There is a perfect representation of Jesus' face and various illustrations of Mary with descriptions written in Assyrian. Assyrian is a dialect of Akkadian, a Semitic language spoken in Mesopotamia that is now extinct. This ancient dialect has survived for almost two and a half thousand years, but has been long forgotten for around two thousand years. Despite being robbed and smuggled, the Bible only has 50 pages that are in decent shape. The images on it are pure artwork. No one knows who created them, but they must have been created by a well-known artist at the time because they are not plain illustrations, but magnificent works of art. Tokat is notorious for smuggling priceless relics of human history. Authorities discovered the priceless artwork Orphan Man standing by Vincent van Gogh in a car trunk in a crayon lithograph with scraping on tan woven paper valued at approximately 500,000 euros. Many countries had signed bilateral treaties in order to combat the lucrative smugglers market. 
Egypt and Italy announced an agreement in 2008 to trace smuggled antiquities and it has recovered over 195 objects and 21,660 coins stolen in the black market. Several operations around Tokar's center helped police recover the antique Bible. The authorities arrested 10 people after learning that three suspects were selling historical relics. Because of how obvious it was that these criminals were, there is a possibility that the authorities may never have been able to recover the Bible if it was entrusted to a professional group. Theologians expect that these 51 historical pages will clarify and expand on many riddles of Jesus' life, as well as provide uncommon insights into how Christianity has grown over the last 1,000 years. So far, no official information has emerged from these pages. Because theologians remained mute following its discovery, no official declaration concerning the intricate contents of this Bible exists. Some believe that we will never know what these revealing documents say, since it will be an extraordinary shock to discover the truth contained within these pages. Those pages were not valuable until researchers discovered that the author had created every page out of gold, which could explain why only 51 remained. But what if everything Christians have been taught about the Bible abruptly changes? Two phrases on the appropriate themes can shift a whole church's dogma. The beliefs and teachings of Christianity stem from Bibles written over 2,000 years ago, intact to any new narrative that may surface down the road with discoveries such as thousand-year-old relics. These new additions are crucial for providing more critical facts to one of the world's most famous histories. The various testaments revealed over the years may not always coincide due to minor variations within the scriptures. Because it was written by many authors, certain differences can come as a complete surprise. Authorities discovered a Bible that contradicted everything we knew about Jesus 22 years ago, also in Turkey, where minor discrepancies are an understatement. According to this 2,000-year-old Bible, Jesus was not crucified. However, this ancient discovery is not a Bible, but rather the writings of St. Barnabas, one of Paul's associates. This book is worth roughly $28 million because of its historical relevance and challenging new facts. Even photocopies of each page may set you back more than $1.5 million. Barnabas penned the book in Syriac and Aramaic, which was also Jesus' native tongue. The book was examined by experts who found that it could be over 1,500 years old. It describes the account of Judas being crucified instead of Jesus and how Jesus rose to heaven while still alive. The book does not present Jesus as the Son of God, but rather as a prophet. And the alterations keep coming because it also refers to Apostle Paul as an imposter. This is particularly intriguing because the book was written by St. Barnabas. This could imply that the Apostle Paul forced St. Barnabas to write a different history. Despite these incredible discoveries on such a significantly divergent version of the Bible, the book attributed to St. Barnabas that was discovered in Turkey was not a Bible, it was simply a book. While this discovery illustrated with gold leaf can be regarded a Bible, one of the mysteries disclosed in pristine circumstances is included inside those images. There have been thousands of years of speculation about what Jesus looked like, and official versions around the world don't go into much detail. Despite this, one of the simplest ways to communicate to everyone without saying a single word is through an image, which explains why the Western world adopts only one manifestation of Jesus, with long hair down to his chest, fair skin and a beard, and deep eyes that are crystal blue in some interpretations. This portrayal of Jesus can be found in many large cathedrals and glass windows art pieces, an interpretation passed down through generations. People who adopt it, however, never challenge it since it's not an authentic portrayal of Jesus. The portrayal is said to have started during the Byzantine era. Because the Byzantines saw Jesus figuratively, they depicted him with an aura of serenity and a massive robe. They painted their own depictions of what Jesus would look like following his resurrection, but they didn't add any realism, an interpretation reminiscent of Hellenic pagan gods' robes and sumptuous sculptures to describe that godlike position. Long hair and huge beards have long been associated with divinity, as shown in various renditions of the Greek god Zeus throughout history, 
and artists in the Byzantine Empire attempted to make Jesus look like a young Zeus. Early Christians attempted to give realism to the interpretations by portraying Jesus as a regular man with short hair and no beard. While theorists claim that Jesus' visage is modelled on the infamous Pope's son Cesare Borgia because Jesus was originally depicted as non-European due to his Jewish ancestry. However, Borgia did not like that image and directed that a more European-looking Jesus be created. Pope Alexander VI used his son as a model and knowing the lengthy infamous path of corruption, cruelty and murder, they were completely capable of that and more. In 2001, an investigator recreated a 3D representation of what an ordinary man might look like in that era and civilization using a genuine skull recovered in the same place and year Jesus was born. The finished piece did not resemble the Western conception of Jesus. If all we know about Jesus is correct, he was a Palestinian Jewish man from Nazareth, a town near Sepphoris, one of Galilee's two major cities, who did not resemble a European. And in this Bible, we can have concrete proof that the figure we see on those pages could easily be Jesus himself, as this Bible ties back to the first branch of Christianity, which was assumed to be Catholic before they discovered this Bible. Nonetheless, it turns out that the initial branches are Assyrian, the language in which this old book was written. This Bible is invaluable. It can provide a unique viewpoint on early Christian history since the earliest humanity has discovered can be found in the Leningrad Codex, which contains material dating back to the 3rd century. If we can better comprehend those early days, we will be able to develop more accurate hypotheses and describe the seven different branches. Despite the fact that the Bible is beyond restoration and has been seriously damaged by smugglers, we can observe several historical individuals with possibly the most genuine depictions. Right, so that brings us to the end of that video and two things that I would like to discuss following on from that. Number one being that, um, what was it, that Jesus, peace be upon him, was not crucified. Is that a shocker to us Muslims? No. But do you know what? What um, stuck out to me was when he said um, that it could have potentially been Judas. That makes a lot more sense. Do you know why? Because Judas was the person who essentially betrayed Jesus. And so for him to essentially take the punishment of Jesus' peace be upon him makes sense to me. I don't know about you, but for me it does. It makes sense as to the Quran stipulating that Jesus peace be upon him was replaced and I think Judas fits the perfect replacement of Jesus in terms of there's actually a reason as to why he died which was of course the betraying of Jesus peace be upon him now for me I used to always question like what do you mean Jesus peace be upon him was replaced. That was always a question I've had when it comes to Islam. Why was he replaced? Who was he replaced by? Was he replaced just by a random person? Because I felt as though that was not fair at all. And it makes so much sense that it could have potentially been Judas. What do you guys think? Do you think Jesus peace be upon him was replaced by Judas? For me, I think it makes perfect sense. And also, the second thing I wanted to talk about was the image of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Now, I feel like I have come to the understanding as to why it's not right for us to depict a picture of Jesus or depict a picture of any of the prophets, peace be upon them. And that is simply just to avoid these type of things from happening like now people are going to not even war people are having disagreements over what jesus christ peace be upon him looked like and like it's just causing a whole unnecessary argument and it's not really needed you know it's really not now i completely understand as to why in islam we don't 
try to depict what Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him or any of the other prophets look like and also I see a lot of Christians attack Muslims as Muslims for going to Kaaba or facing um, the Kaaba when we are praying now don't get me wrong I questioned it too I definitely questioned it when I was learning about Islam I was like nah that don't make no sense but obviously um, as I was learning more and more about Islam it, it made more sense but a video a clip that was shown in the video was um, the Christians praying towards a portrait of Jesus Christ peace be upon him several portraits should I say now they say that as Muslims we idol worship um, the Kaaba now I would just like to ask the Christians out there from if you rewind the clip you you find it from that clip what do you think the Christians are doing do you think they're idolizing those portraits of Jesus Christ peace be upon him for me it certainly looks that way and what does the Bible say right just search it up if you don't know <laughs> like the bible literally says not to do that so but i see a lot of christians doing that i did it i'm not going to sit here and say i didn't i did it we had it in my church or well, they still have it we used to pray we have the stations of the cross um basically portraits depicting um the events that led up to um jesus christ peace be upon him his resurrect his um crucifixion and really you literally used to go to each of them and literally be praying yeah but the christians will obviously turn their blind eye to that but anyways guys what do you think of today's video i feel like there was quite a lot of points made um it definitely gets your brain thinking and gets you questioning things um what do you guys think let me know in the comment section down below and i'll see you guys in the next one please don't forget to like comment share and please don't forget to subscribe and take good care of yourselves assalamu alaikum everybody